Hello guys, today we have something special here. This is RPG 76 Komar out of Poland. What is it? It's a single shot RPG round but with some very key differences from the traditional RPG 7, RPG 18, RPG 22 NATO and all other commonly used types of anti-tank weapons. So, it comes in plastic bag, that's common for all the single-use RPGs, doesn't matter if Polish, if Chinese or Russian, they are always sealed in such packaging. The Russian ones are also wrapped in red foil, so under, beneath, underneath the plastic there is a bright pink packaging, so it doesn't actually look like a weapon at all, so it's a little bit confusing. But truly, the Russian single shot RPGs are wrapped in bright pink. Here we have, we open the back, we get the RPG out. The nozzles and the trigger itself have a paper wrapping that, of course, disintegrates over time or change the position with the storage, right? At the manipulation. So you threw that off. On top of the warhead we have a plastic cover, it's not fixed at all. And also the front of the round is full, full safe, so you can tap it hard and it doesn't explode, unlike PG-7, the normal round for RPG-7. If you remove the safety cap on the PG-7, Warhead and slap it hard, it might explode, depending on the manufacturing period. So we continue. Here we have the sling included, right? Now, we have a little plump here. Little wire, yeah, that signals to you that it was never manipulated and fucked around with. So you just rip that off. Now, to extend the buttstock, you just apply a tension, like so, pam. Here we have a lock. So we apply a little bit of tension again, it click, and what we see here, here we have our front side and our rear side erected. So here we have on the rear side, we have increments 50, 150 and 250 meters. So maximum the automatic self-destruction activates at around 400 meters. But the 250 meter is the maximum for the combat efficiency. We continue with the buttstock. You must extend the butt plate like this. And this is the weapon in combat order. Now the weapon is ready to fire. And where the trigger is, right? That's the question. So here we have this cover. Under spring tension again. And underneath it's a simple button. When you press it upward, the gun fires. So you can have multiple launchers ready, like three of them on the edge of the trench and it's still very, very safe to manipulate around because we have this metal protector so it's relatively okay to move around with the gun like this. Now, the key difference from all other sh shoulder fired RPGs is the nozzles that move the rocket forward going are only on the edge of the warhead itself. There is no backward pressure. Those nozzles give, give to the rocket all the energy 
At all the rotation it needs to reach the target. They are angled 45 degrees sideways on both sides. Which is very good for firing out of buildings, out of structures and out of armored vehicles. Because you just push the whole warhead out. The key thing is to keep your second arm here on this yellow field. If you hold the gun more forward, you will burn yourself with the gases, with the combustion gases coming out of the nozzles. So you need to hold your left hand all the way here. And your right hand use for triggering the weapon. So you just take your finger, remove gently the cover. You can apply tension with your left hand on the cover so the trigger is completely exposed. You just focus on, on your target, choose the proper distance and with upward pressure fire the rocket. Like so, if the gun fail to fire, you can reload the trigger mechanism and this actually occurs often with all these guns that are sto in storage 20 plus years. So you just press the button same like if you would just want to fall the stack again to the transport position. Remove it and apply pressure again. That apply tension again on the trigger spring and the gun is reloaded and you can have your second attempt to fire this weapon. Click again. So remember, keep your left hand all the way in back of the weapon and that's the most important thing. So guys, also very important point is how you layer the gear on yourself regarding the RPG. What I usually do, because the sling on the single-use RPGs are very thin, okay? Like this. I put my hoodie on, threw the RPG over it, so it doesn't cut in my neck. Then I remove the hood and I put my AK on top. That way when I get to the position, I remove the AK completely, keep it on the ground as so, and then I can remove my RPG. Of course, depend on the task, but usually you have your backpack ready on you, because you fire and you run away. What will remain after the single-use RPGs is usually the tube. Here is only the tube, only this small part, or the warhead go forward, fly out. You try to take the tube with you, but not at any cost, depend on the situation. So I get to the position, I prepare the RPG, and then if you wait in ambush, of course you wait. If you, have, if you are on target, you can fire. After it fly out, you just take it as so, put your head through, hand through, through it on your back, then you have your AK in front of you and you just chew back, you get out. So always think how you layer the slings and the layers on top of each other. Now, where you might see this weapon, actually Poland made only around 100,000 of these and they were all recently sold to, sold to the gun dealer, so pretty soon you will see them everywhere around, everywhere around Africa, Asia, maybe South America. Because they just were completely phased out by the Polish military, they sold them to the private sector and we will see where those will mysteriously appear. Also keep in mind that this warhead is very capable. It can beat up to 340 centimeters of armor steel, which is quite a lot, especially for single shot RPG. 340 millimeters is the same standard like RPG-7 has. Of course, there are update, updated warheads for the RPG-7. I don't count these. The 340 millimeter is the basic level 
of the PG-7 round. So this, this, this warhead, it's very capable. Then we have single shot RPGs, they, most of them are around 300 millimeters of penetration only. So that's about it, about the RPG-76 camera, and see you guys in the next video.